Amazon continues to delight and shows us another report inside of Seller Central. This one is in beta. Not everybody has access to it. I'm going to show you all about it and tell you how do customers find your brand. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. This is called the Search Query Performance and I'm going to show you how this works, how to get to it. Link at the top of the description. Some of you are going to just click that and go right on in and that's nothing wrong with that. Here is one of my brands, Age of Sage. And in here, in this report, we're gonna see all of the search queries to find the brand. These are keywords that people are typing into Amazon, finding my products, and we can now see my percentage of how, how many people are clicking on my brand versus somebody else. So my brand, Age of Sage, just for some context sake, here is the brand store that I operate, I sell some incense, some soaps. I've got some other cool mom gift box stuff like that. And when we look at this, not a surprise, first keyword that comes up, Sage, which is awesome. That's the name of my three-year-old daughter. So search volume, 12,000. Not bad. That's a pretty good keyword. And when we look at the search funnel impressions, which I'll be honest, I have to click on this. What does that even mean? Apparently, the search query performance dashboard lists the top queries or customer searches that led customers to the brand's products. That makes sense. I'm good there. It includes overall query performance, such as impressions, clicks, card ads, and purchases for each query and the brand share of that performance. Now, what's really cool here is we've never had data on cart ads. So this is brand spanking new information. Search funnel impressions, total count, the number of ASINs impressed for the query originated from the search result. Clearly somebody with a technical background wrote that one. Same day shipping speed, price, brand count, 1D shipping speed, one day, I'm guessing that's what that means, brand price, brand share, and two day shipping speed. So these are the metric glossaries that we'll be looking at today. So the search funnel impressions, here's the total count, 646,000. Here's the number of brands that come up for that, 11,500. My brand share is 1.78%. The search click funnel, so there's 186 brands of those 11,000 that show up on this particular brand phrase. My brand share is 1.73%. So that means almost two out of 100 people when they search for Sage, they click on my products. Same day shipping speed, 1800. I don't really care about the shipping speed, truth be told, we're all prime, so that's kind of, we'll skip over that today. Cart ads, so that means 4,500 people, and by the way, this is gonna be by week. See the date range there? Why don't we switch that over to monthly? I think most of us usually think in monthly terms, and we don't have March data yet, so we're just gonna apply for February here. So we redid this. I think that's probably a better way to do this. 52,000 people look for Sage. 2.4 million impressions. 315 brands showed up in the click funnel. And it looks like, there we go. And we'll scroll to the right here. So my brand share dropped down to 0.74%. That means in the last week, I did better than I did in the month of February. And as we scroll to the right here, cart ads. These are the number of people who added one of my products to their cart. And we had a total count of 18,000 people added their out of one of my Sage, Age of Sage products after searching the word Sage. And a brand share of 0.63% of all cart ads. So uh, not too shabby there. And as we scroll to the right, brand share, this is the search funnel on purchases. So that means... 0.56%, about one out of 200 people when they search Sage will buy one of my products. That's pretty neat. Nobody's ever had this kind of data before. We didn't know how many people would search something and add it to the cart. We didn't know how many people would search something and click on it. And now we're getting this data down to the keyword level. This is an amazing amount of data right? We used to just um, have estimations about how important a keyword is. And now we have the exact numbers. So as you go in and look at this, you're going to be able to see this for all the brands that are on your account. So we got Sage Sticks, right? So my brand share of the clicks 2% on Sage Sticks. 
And as we go down, we can see like, where am I weak and where am I strong? So organic soap for men, I have a 10% organic share on that. That's amazing, right? Like 10%. If somebody searches organic soap for men, 10% chance they're going to click on my products. And a 13% chance they're going to add it to their cart. And an 18% chance they're going to buy my product, right? What does that tell us? What kind of data does that show us? That means when somebody clicks on one of my soap products, and we're going to go to the men's soap. So here's, here's the fruity one. Some men can buy that, but typically the ones that we're really pushing is going to be the macho and the masculine soaps here. And that means 18% of somebody looking for organic men's soap buy my product. That is massive market domination that I have on this one right now. And when we look at the fact that uh, when we go look at the, the data here, now only 452 people are looking for that in the month of February, right? So that's not a very high number. But of that number, I own that market. I probably have the strongest brand domination there. Now, okay, so let's just see what else I dominate on, right? Let's go over here and look at purchases. Click on this. One of my favorite things about this is we actually get the ability to filter the freaking report. You can also download it, customize the columns. They have 30 different columns. Check this out. All right. So you can look at the search queries, the funnel impressions. You can even look at pricing. Nobody cares about shipping speed. We're going to disable those. Uh, but if you're doing merchant fulfilled, that would be a totally different important metric. So we're going to get rid of all of that. So we got the purchases, clicks, and card ads, right? Like that's the biggest thing from this data that we're learning. All right, so now I've sorted it by brand share. So vegan soaps, bars for men. Only one person the whole month of February searched for this term. <laughs> but of that one person, I have 100% brand share on purchases. So that one guy out there, whoever you are, that searched for vegan soap, bars for men, thank you. Thank you for that. All right, so when we look at uh, some of this other data, got a 25% brand share on spa gifts from spa gift baskets for mom. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I wish they had the bar. Um, all right, so let's scroll over here. So what, what are we going for? Search query volume, pretty low, right? These are all super low, right? So I wish we could do like a, a dual filter here where we could like filter search volume and brand share and kind of go down the list here. And when I clicked on the the brand share all right let's 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 try this let's click on the filter for search volume and then the, obviously the higher the search volume the lowest my brand share is going to be right here in this column so we're seeing pretty weak numbers on the brand share column right here with that sort of filter gifts for men i've got a 0.02% market share with that that's kind of neat um, over 200,000 people searching for that i am not even registering a percentage on soap 0.01% on incense, and I'm, I'm at 0% on gifts, but 007 on gifts for mom, right? Like, that's pretty cool. So this is really interesting because this gives you a lot of data to figure out, like, where you're undertapped, where the search volumes are. Remember, these are actual search volumes. Like, these are query volumes that Amazon is now being transparent with. I cannot stress enough how groundbreaking this is. This is an amazing, important thing uh, to point out here. So let's keep playing around with this. Let's go, let's see like where I'm dominating on total cart ads. All right. So, well, I guess let me scroll to the bottom here and go to the right. So what I really want is my brand cart ads. All right. So I, don't, I think they could improve the UI a tiny bit here. It makes it a little bit easier to navigate. All right, so total brand cart ads. Brand count? No, nope, not brand count. That's not what we want. We want total purchases. So not very easy to count your own purchases out of this on the filters. I think they could probably add a column for that. It probably makes this a little bit easier because brand count's a little confusing. What we really, I don't really care how many brands show up. I want to know um, I do want to know. I guess I guess percentage is kind of the best way to do this. You know, it's kind of mulling this over a little bit. But brand share, I want to know what my brand share is on the most important keywords, right? Like that's that's really what I'm trying to figure out how to customize this report for. And I'm coming up a little short. 
Uh, you can see 25 rows at a time. You can switch that to 100 rows. There's 40 pages of data on the bottom left here. And you can see the rows in the bottom right there, how many rows you can show. So haven't found the best way to really get my macro view of what I'm looking to do yet. So let's play around with this a little bit. So search funnel cart ads, uh, brand count, total count. So let's, let's sort by total count on cart ads. And maybe... Maybe this is how they are are doing it. Maybe this is how total count on search funnel cart ads is how many people are adding my product to the cart. I'm not sure if I'm following this entirely. Let's just run some math on this, though. If 2.4, no, okay, search quality by, so 52,000 looked for the search term. And 18,000 added it to the cart. That kind of makes sense. Okay, so that's not, that's not, that can't be my add to cart number. And when we look at the search funnel purchases, 7,300 people made a purchase on 52,000. So kind of running some quick and dirty math, seven divided by 52. We'll grab the calculator out so we get exact percentages. 7 divided by 52, that's 13% of people, essentially, when they search for Sage, make a conversion. Um, so, oh, that's something interesting to think about, right? If you have, if you know the conversion rate for a search term now, and you go to your business report, and remember, they now show mobile data, but if you know the baseline is 13%, and you're at 11%, that means you're not converting as well as the competition, right? Now you have an actionable piece of data to think about. So that's that's an interesting one. Uh, all right, so we just calculated that manually to figure out a conversion rate. That would be cool if they added that as a column here. Um, so when we look at total count on purchases and my brand share. So let's look at the definition of brand share one more time here. Percentage share of purchases from the brand's catalog compared to the total count for the query. Confusingly written, but I, I, I want to translate that to if 7,300 people made a purchase, of those, this many bought from me. So let's, let's pull out, the, let's run with the calculator a little bit more here, right? So if we look at 7,300 times 0.056, that's 410 people purchased from me. Does that seem right? 410 people purchased from me. That seems high. That would have been point. That would have been five percent. All right, I, I missed the decimal point one more time here. Let's try that again. 7,300 times 0.056. So 41 people purchased from me. That makes sense now because the 0.56 is of a percentage point. Okay, so 41 people purchased Sage from me out of 7,300 purchases made on the entire platform. Okay, I feel, uh, I'm understanding the numbers a little bit more now. All right, so when you run that brand share, you got to divide, you got to times your brand share percentage with the decimal points times the total number of cart ads. And that, that'll give you the number of people that bought from you specifically. I mean, it makes no sense. Why wouldn't they just tell us that? Oh, okay. <laughs> nope, does that, does that correlate to the brand count? Wait a minute. <laughs> now I'm questioning my, my own mathematical abilities and analytics abilities now. Uh, let's see if that checks out. All right, let's see if that checks out. Uh, zero and zero, 0 0.02 on the one here. Let's find one that we've got some numbers. So 26. So let's, let's, see, if, let's see if this correlates. All right, so um, 1366 times 0 0.019. If that comes out to 26, and it does. Okay, so... So, so this is how I figure stuff out, guys. All right, this is how I figure stuff out. I'm I'm pretty much an analytics retard, but if I run the math enough, I figure it out. All right. So I'm sure others are probably you know uh, running through the same like, what does this mean? What does this data say? Um, all right. So now I understand it. So they did give us the total uh, purchases. So let's. So now that we know that, let's sort it by. I wish they would name these things like so intuitively, like brand count. What does that freaking mean? No, what, what this actually means is number of conversions that your brand got, right? Why would, why would they call it brand count? What are the, what are the people at Amazon thinking? 
All right. I, I, I know this is a more of a rambly video than my typical like in and out two minute reel. Um, but now that we've got that under a handle here, when I click on brand count, you guys saw that it's not actually sorting fully top to bottom, which is silly. Let me click it a couple more times. There we go. Okay, so that means sage candles for cleansing house and sage are my most important converting keywords for my brand. Sage sticks, white sage, organic soap for men. That's, that's good to know. All right, so now we understand what converts for the brand. These are the actual conversions in the brand count. Rename that conversions, Amazon. Um, and then we know what our brand share is. Okay, I'm feeling good about this. So organic soap for men, that was one of my bigger wins, 13% brand share. So I'm over dominating that particular. Um, but as we can see from the rest of this data, it falls off pretty quick, right? Like there's not like market domination going in most of this other sector. And so when you look at your data and, and uh, I, I, I have seen, I have seen some funny data already. Um, we had, you know, there was, there was one report that I looked at and uh, my response to that report was don't tell your customers how to use your product. Uh, the features that the customer believes work based on these search data will help you understand the customer avatar, right? And sometimes what might be a deficit in a product is actually a feature or maybe you have been selling this product in a way that makes sense to you, but the customer is buying a product in the way that it makes sense to them. And so I think you can grapple on this to see some of that data. Now, when we looked at my data, there really wasn't anything like shocking, right? Like there's nothing in here where I was like, wow, that's interesting. It was more of a confirmation that Yes, of course, I would convert on sage candles and stuff like that. Like I sell incense, right? So if we go back to the store here and we look at the sage incense product, of course, I convert on those terms. It makes perfect sense, right? Makes perfect incense even. But when you look at your data, you may come to a different conclusion. So leave what you think in the comment section. Let's hear what you have to say about the situation and be a little bit of a Sherlock Holmes for us and see what your report says. If you don't have access yet, come back in maybe a week or two. Maybe Amazon will open it up more and more. But leave in the comments, what did you find about the data that surprised you? My name is Stephen Pope, and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guide.